Okay. Okay. Good. I want to make sure we get all of this. How are you doing today? Yes, I'm good. I've, I've been going since 5 a.m. So I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, good. Well, I want to keep the momentum going. So I'm going to start out with a little introduction and then we'll get into it. Okay. Okay. You have great okay. energy. I'm ready. I'm excited. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Jasmine Flowers with I Hear That Girl. And I am here with the amazing, the brilliant, the talented Sky Townsend. Now, let me tell you guys a little bit about her. Y'all should know her by now. But Sky is actress, singer, comedian of the five-time Emmy-nominated HBO show, A Black Lady Sketch Show. Welcome, Sky. How are you? I'm feeling good. How are you doing? I'm doing so well today. I'm excited to speak <laughs> with you. Like I have. If I I'm can ready. Just... I'm so excited. I feel like it's gonna be a good one. Yes, it is. Like, let me tell you, I have been watching you for a while. But from your Vine days, where you would do Vines and you would do Beyonce impressions. And I I will say, back then I was like, she's so talented. Like, she is so talented. And I always, I always kind of felt like I would see you even more throughout your life and through your career. Because I was like, she's so talented. She's so funny. And it's, I love to see Black women just taking charge of their lives and their careers and, and doing things. And I love funny Black women anyway. So yes. um, <laughs> for me, it's the consistency and it's the growth. And I feel like it totally makes sense for you to be on a Black lady sketch show. It's honestly, it, it's divine timing. I feel like I've been preparing for this moment my whole life, not even <laughs> knowing, you know, because before this, this show didn't exist. So I'm like, oh, I want to be on SNL one day or if they ever brought it back in Living Color. So for this to be a show that's created once I had done all the work, it just felt like the craziest moment of fate. Absolutely. Absolutely. How has the experience been being on a Black Lady sketch show? It has been just like a live masterclass. It has been um, the wildest experience to to challenge myself as, as an actor, to challenge myself as a comedian. Um, you have to trust your gut so much on a show like this, especially when we start improvising, because if you can't hang on the court, they're not gonna pass you the ball, you know? So I just really always wanted to stay on my toes and make sure that I'm learning and I'm listening. And, you know, I think we talk so much about improvising and speaking in comedy, but so much of it is listening. Is, mm. is this joke really gonna land after what they just said? Oh, you pre-planned that joke, you missed that moment, next. Like mm. listening, is so key and so I've just been trying to stay present on the show I think that's one of the hardest things is you're so ready to you know work the next day and you know a whole nother character's coming up that I've been like just be present you know but it's been amazing that's so awesome so I, um I, well you said something earlier about you feel like you've been preparing for this your whole life like yeah. you said well I, I will actually say your father has said before we'll get into that a little yeah. bit later but your father said that even as a child, you would yeah. be practicing characters and doing funny voices and things like that. So I guess you really have been practicing your whole life for this. First of all, you're so good at what you do because no, you didn't do a circle back. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, excuse me. No, no, no. Anybody watching, take notes. This is how you do an interview. Anyway, um, yes, I have been preparing my whole life. I feel like I always knew I wanted to entertain when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I didn't know would it, would it be music, would it be acting? And I did characters as a child, you know? A lot of people don't know that is, I was like seven years old and I would watch movies and then mimic how they sounded. And I remember one time my dad played uh, The Bad Seed for Me, which was a movie from the 50s. Yes. He was like, what, what do you think about this? And I was like, eh, it wasn't really for me. I mean, they talk kind of weird. He's like, well, what do you mean they talk weird? I'm like, well, you know, the mother spoke like this and I didn't understand why she was always talking like that. And my dad was like. She's a character. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, She's we got character. something here. Yeah. And so, you know, I would pick up accents and I could do British and Southern and it just felt so natural to me. But I didn't consider myself a comedian until honestly, till I booked this show. I always mm. felt like, oh, I'm funny. I know funny people, but I didn't feel like I trained to be a comedian. And so I ran from the title, but I've been doing voices since I was like seven. Yes, yes, that's so yeah. interesting. You ever consider yourself a comedian? I actually no. saw that somewhere else where you said that in another interview yeah. where you said, consider yourself to be a comedian. I was like, that's so, that's mm -hmm. so funny. Do you, do you feel like not considering yourself to be a comedian? Do you feel like maybe, and I guess in some kind of way you need the validation from so like it, like the peers of women to say, well, actually you're funny, you're hilarious and you have what it takes. Yeah. Do you, you think know, that? I, I really think it comes down to 
I respect the craft so much mm -hmm. because I grew up around it that I, nothing bothers me more than people hopping into the craft prematurely without doing their homework. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to be another person who just, oh, I made videos and now I'm a comedian. And, and it's like, even when people call somebody who made videos, like a celebrity, I'm like, I just, I feel like you have to earn these titles. You know what I mean? People can hate me for that. But when people would be like, I'm a fan of you before I was on TV, I'd be like, I don't think that's the right word yet. You know, I don't think yeah. I've earned those stripes yet. And so I, I think, yeah, I respected comedy so much that I didn't feel like I'd had enough skin in the game. I don't really think it was about validation as much as it was, I didn't earn that title yet. Like right. I'm just the silly girl who cracks jokes, but I'm a comedian once I have something to truly show for it, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful, like really yeah. focusing and, and practicing that craft. I think that's really beautiful. Um, yeah. So let's get into this a little bit. So um, I think for a lot of Black people, we want legacy, especially when it comes to our second, third, fourth, fifth generations. That's what we look forward yeah. to. And I feel like for those people who don't know, and we'll, I want to get into that a little bit later too, but for those people who don't know, your father is the legendary producer, comedian himself, Robert Towns. Like he has, I mean, let's just stop there. He has been amazing. So I've been told my mama says it's my daddy, but uh, you know, I ain't never questioned that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> but he actually had his own comedy special on HBO in 1989. And to see that you are on HBO too, to me, that's that's a beautiful legacy right there. Is that you are on and and in your own right. You are on the first Black female-led show. And we know that Issa, Issa Rae is the executive producer. Robin uh, is the leader of, she's, you know, the fearless leader of this whole thing. She's the queen and, of it. Right, absolutely. The legacy, the connection between your father doing this in 1989, being the first Black man, and now yeah. you being on the show with a lead of Black women is so beautiful. Can you speak to that legacy a little bit? You know, I, I just... For me, it's funny you use that word because people asked me what was my focus for the year. And I said, it's paying homage and mm. it's focusing on legacy. And, um, you know, I was raised to love this game so much, but I also saw so much by watching my dad that I was just taking mental notes my entire life. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I always say people laugh and they're like, well, what, did, what has he taught you? And I go, honestly, one of the best things he could have ever done was be hard on me with my with my skills was to be like hey you're my baby but i'm separating you being my baby from your gift this needs work that needs sharpening you need to study more i could tell you're getting lazy stay on it and a lot of i think celebrities are afraid to do that with their babies or they have goggles on they, they right. have goggles on because they're like next generation my baby's a genius and it's like <laughs> they're work. <not>. yeah <laughs> study and so you know it's it's been beautiful because as, as easily as I could have been spoiled by being around the game, I think it made me so humbled by seeing greatness mm -hmm. and, and to really appreciate people who put their soul into what they do. And, you know, even when I discuss creating a character, I don't think people realize that head to toe, we're creating these people, right? Like if, if say, you know, I have the girl and one shoulders up and then the mouth is to the right and she looks like this all the time, I have to commit to this character for the entire time. You know, you right. have to really, it's so much more than just making a silly voice. And so I think by by growing up and seeing greatness up close, I was like, I can't enter the game and do anything but. And so, you know, I'm still new and I'm this is my mm -hmm. first show, but I hope to keep building. But legacy is so important to me. I look at families like the Waynes and, you know, the Murphys and I see yes. their seeds trying to get into it too. And so it's like, it's, it's just been really beautiful to to have the example set, mm -hmm. but to also know like, you can't come in here and be lazy with your craft. like. You don't don't be the one where they find out that's your your dad and they go, oh wow, that's his kid. Okay. You know, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. And that's why I think that you're so special, is because I don't think that anybody does that to you. And I think like we we, we know your dad, but yeah. we also are learning you and knowing you. And it yeah, I don't think that anybody is going to look at Sky Townsend and just be like, <laughs> oh, okay, I see how she got it. It's Okay. See how she got this role. It's a totally Thank different you. way to say it. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you so much. That's the I, goal. Mm, I think it's a testament of how good you are is Thank the fact you. that you can stand on your own despite being a child of a Hollywood star. The fact yeah. that you can stand on your own and your own comedic genius, your own way as an actress, and you're a brilliant singer too. You're Thank whole, you. And to be able to do that on your own, I just, 
I think that that's so awesome. Thank you so much. That is honestly the goal is, I was like, when people think of me, I want them to go, whatever you have, put it to the side and be like, yeah, but she's talented though. That's what I'm working right. towards is the first thing that people think of is go, well, she could sing. Well, I didn't really like the singing, but I saw her characters. I don't want to be able to be denied. And that is mm -hmm. what I'm working towards is a career where people go, all right, I might not have loved that, but I saw that. And yeah, the girl's good. You know, <laughs> that's what I want. Yeah, and, and clearly um, the people, the decision makers over at the Black Lady uh, Sketch Show has seen it too because you started out at what last year in the second season and you've already moved up to a series regular. I'm happy about it. Yeah, I came in as a featured player and, you know, that just was smaller parts. It was like mm -hmm. if they needed uh, a nurse in the scene, oh, give it to Sky. So it was kind of just picking up the characters that that, that were just left over and now it's like, Okay, now you're assigned the bigger parts. Now you get more creative control. What are you going to do with that? And exactly. I'm really excited for this season because I think people can see I really pushed myself, you know, and as the season starts unfolding, new characters get revealed and you go, oh, I know her crazy self came up with that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm excited. What's your favorite thing about this new season coming up? I know you can give us a little something. Oh, favorite thing. Uh, you know, it's not something that you're going to see and notice. I mm -hmm. think it's just at the end of the season, you'll be like, what felt different? And this is what it is. Okay. I feel like the love that we have for our crew is so crazy. And oh. everyone is so, so gifted in every, every position that they're in on set. And I think people don't realize like, this is such a team effort, what we do. Um, you know, they see us and they go, congrats on the show. I'm like, you don't understand. Our director gave us the freedom to do this. Wardrobe, pick those pants. She's amazing for that. Like, we, we have so much love for our crew and this year just felt like a, a family working together. And I think because of that, we unlocked a really special dynamic that I'm excited for people to see unfold. But the crew is just, I, I think we've finally gotten into a groove where we move like a family and, and you, you work differently when you're like that. That's so awesome. You spoke, yeah. You've spoken before about the focus and the discipline that it's taken for you to really notice the level that you're at now, the level that you're required to perform at now. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that focus that you had to, the focus and uh, discipline that you had to gain to do this? Yeah, I, well, you know, it's, it's interesting because we shot both seasons during the pandemic, season two mm. and season three. And uh, I locked down for the entire season because I didn't want to come to work and be the reason that the show stopped. And so it was really isolating because you know, you work these 12, 13, 14, 15 hour days, then you come home, you sleep, you're by yourself, work. Weekends, you're just in your house like, gosh, I really miss mm. everybody. But I know, you know, my sister always says, in order to be the 1%, you have to do what 99% of people will not. And so, <laughs> <laughs> look, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so that sat with me of like, okay, you must be focused. And now when you're stuck in the house, what do you do about it? What are you watching? What are you studying? What are old films that made you laugh when you were younger that you haven't watched in years? You know, what made The Mask funny? What made Austin Powers funny? What made mm -hmm. In Living Color funny? And so uh, I just, yeah, I really, I wanted to bring a really crazy amount of range to this season. And a lot of those characters haven't come out yet. I think they'll come out of the woodwork and people go, oh my God, what is wrong with her? Uh, but I just, yeah, I did so much studying because I wanted to pay homage to so many comedians that I just I, I think deserve way more, like mm -hmm. Kim Whitley, like Countess Vaughn. I mean, the Parkers, um, her timing was so you know, like that's who I'm paying homage to this season is the people who I grew up adoring who changed my life comedically. Absolutely, I think that's beautiful. Yeah. What do you want the audience to take away from what and how important the Black Lady Sketch Show is? I want. I want people to see the show and reconsider what they think black female comedians can do. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in a room where, this is deep, we gonna get a little deep, oh no, get a little deep. <laughs> I've been in a room where I made a comedic choice that I could tell rub somebody wrong because they felt like somebody who looked like me wasn't supposed to make a decision like that. I've mm -hmm. been in a room where they go, she's not supposed to know our type of comedy, why? She's witty, okay, that was interesting, that was layered. Right. I want them to know that I, I've seen comedians like Jim Carrey and Mike Myers, and I believe that I can do those kind of things, but right. I just, I never really see it done. You know, we had Maya Rudolph and, you know, but then she kind of transitioned more into film. I'm like, as far as character work, I've never really seen a black woman take character work by storm in, in the film industry. And I think when they see our show, they go, 
I might have been limiting what black women can do in comedy. I might have just been reducing them to the sassy best friend who goes, oh, hell no. And it's I get it. That yeah. woman exists. And we reflect how many different women exist on our show. But we're more than just the sassy friend. We can be the nerdy girl who's a scientist who's like, what? We can be like the Dominican girl from the Bronx who's, you know, pro-black and Spanish. Like, we can be all these things. And so I just hope they see it and it opens their mind to be like, maybe Hollywood has been a little narrow-minded with what we think these women can do. And um I, I am very empowered by being the quirky, strange one on set. They're like, she is such a weirdo. I love that. <laughs> I, I would love to be the weirdo. So yeah, yeah, I hope that they, yeah, I hope they see it and they just open their minds up a little bit more to, to the fact that we've been be we've been limited and that we have so much more to give and that black women in themselves can be diverse. You Absolutely. know, there's so many types. Absolutely. You guys are definitely shifting the culture. I think that yeah. just by having these opportunities, people are able to see black women so differently and this is what yes. we need <laughs> black, yeah. black. yes <laughs> I was, yes yes i want to shift gears just a little bit more just a little bit here to talk about some of the other things that you're into so i don't know if a lot of people know but you're also a humanitarian so oh what that's a big title <laughs> yes <laughs> what drives you you uh you have put a lot of your focus and your interest into uh supporting homeless and also disadvantaged youth can you talk to us a little bit about why those things or why these uh, people are important to you? You know, um, I love that you're asking about that because there have been times in my life where uh, I felt really guilty for being born into blessings, right? And not even on a celebrity kid tip, I just mean like never gone to sleep hungry, got an education, um, when I needed some with it, something, I had somewhere to go. I could always call on family. Like those things alone, forget everything else on top of it. I felt guilty because I was like, there's certain people born into the world and no one helps them. And so uh, for me, it's been important to, to give back because it keeps me grounded. It keeps me on earth. Like it's like we sometimes get so lost in how weird this make-believe world is that I go, wait, there's so many people who are gifted but didn't have a shot. There are so many people who, you know, were born on the streets to drug addicted parents and like they're doing the best that they can. And so whenever I speak about homelessness, I think I just want people to remember they're human beings. And so mm -hmm. beyond, you know, trying to do a drive where you feed 600 people, I always ask people, when's the last time you saw somebody on the street and just said, are you hungry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when's the last time you made eye contact and smiled at somebody instead of avoiding them we we keep dehumanizing people who are right there in our backyard and so um right. i always just try to encourage anybody in my life get to know the people in your neighborhood i know the names of everybody homeless in my area and i make sure that i have an agreement with them hey if i see you i'm gonna grab you something from the store what you want i know their favorite juices you know yeah. because it's like if i can't feed a hundred people if i'm on set I can make sure that somebody is going to sleep with something in their stomach and waking up with food to eat. And so um, I just think community is important. Like we, we, we get too used to being blessed mm. and, wow. and, and it can be taken from you. <laughs> and I've made a lot of money and then had a lot of debt, you know? And yeah. so it's like, <laughs> you, you, it can come and go, it can come yeah. and go. And so I just, yeah, I want people to get more comfortable with just asking simple questions. Are you thirsty? What is the worst that they can say? No, get away from me. Hell no. It's like, all right, well, you tried. So yeah. I just, yeah, I just, I'm like, y'all, we got to stop dehumanizing people and just do your part because you're getting blessed, but what are you putting back out? Exactly. I think that's beautiful. That's yeah. absolutely beautiful. So just one of the last questions here. I think that Black women for so long have learned that we put everybody before us. And whether you have children or not, it's always somebody who's plight or experience or whatever needs attention more than us yeah. and i think we learn to just disregard our own feelings but i love to ask black women i feel like we're in an era now where we are giving ourselves permission to take on our self-care because we know just like when you're on a plane you got to put your mask on first before you save someone yes. else black people are black women are learning that so what is it that you do for self-care Yo, you came with the Uzi out on this interview, yo. <laughs> you came correct. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. You are killing it. Uh, okay, what do I do for self-care? I have been asked 5,000 questions and this hasn't come up. I think for me, self-care looks like saying no. Mm, um, yes. You yes. know, for me, I even get chills saying that. For me, yeah, self-care is saying no because 
I'm almost surprised if somebody asks me how I'm, how I'm doing and it's not followed by a favor. I'm shocked. I'm confused because my day to day is just people reaching out with a motive, right? And that's okay. We all need stuff. We need favors, but I'm, I'm shocked when somebody just says, how are you? For me, sometimes it's saying, I can't do that for you. I don't have it in me to do that solid. I'm really tired. I just got off a set for 15 hours. I'm so sorry. I can't do this for your friend. Um, it's not overextending myself when I know I'm already empty. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I know when I have nothing left and I tend to still give because I go, well, they really need my help, but we do ourselves a disservice when we give too much. And there's literally, we dig ourselves into a hole and it's so hard to rebuild yourself out of that. And so, yeah, self-care for me looks like saying no. Um, it looks like days where I don't speak sometimes and I sound as crazy as that sounds sometimes I just want to be silent until like 3 p.m because yes. I just go I talk so much for a living and even at work right you think oh actors just talk on set no you have to be kind to everybody and that's a lot of interactions when you start greeting 80 85 people a day right and everybody wants to, oh she you know she she turned her head and didn't really hear me hey Sky you have to be so present that you almost never stop like being on it, even when you're resting on set because you're interacting with so many people. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's silence and saying no and and doing things like face masks at home or body scrubs or little ways that I can pamper myself when I don't have the time because you just, you feel so good after where you go, ah, oh, I needed that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so fair. Ooh, yeah. that's a heavy one, especially as black women. We mm -hmm. we want to be there for everybody and we put ourselves last. And I feel like my entire life shifted when I decided to put me first and not feel guilty about it. It's so important. You like, know? Yeah, when you said saying no, I was like, that's I think that's the best decision yeah. I could ever make is to learn how to say no and to sit in it and be okay with saying no. Like, your your tribe will understand that no yeah. is important, and the people yes. who stand, they're not your people. <laughs> Man, they yeah. have to respect space too. Yeah. I love the friends that I might not see for a month, and they go, "Hey, girl, thinking about you. Sent you five dollars to get to get a coffee today. Love you." That yeah. for me is is village, and that is community because it's like. I, I can't raise anybody else. I've tried to raise men. I've tried to raise friends. I've tried to yeah. raise family members. I don't have no kids. So why am I raising all these people? I don't it's know. Um, so I, I really appreciate those relationships where they allow you to blossom in your own time mm -hmm. because we all are works in progress, you know? Absolutely. Listen, Sky, this has been amazing. You have been wonderful. I'm so looking forward to seeing, just like everybody else, I think we're so looking forward to seeing so many more wonderful things out of you. I'm Thank so you. happy that you have time to speak, with, to speak with I Hear That Girl. Thank you so much. I hear and, that girl. I hear that girl. <laughs> so just tell everybody where they can uh, see it and what time they can see it. Uh, the Black Ladies uh, Sketch Show. So just tell everybody where they can see it. Yes, so a Black Lady Sketch Show streams on HBO Max and then airs on Fridays at 11 p.m. EST on HBO. You see, that got me trained. Uh, and uh, all of my stuff is under my name, Sky Townsend, uh, S-K-Y-E. Don't forget the E, not Sky like the Sky, Sky with an E. And uh, I update all my projects on there, but I really hope people enjoy the third season. We put our souls into it. And uh, once again, love to the crew because they were fantastic. Awesome. That's so great. Thank you so much, Sky. You have been such a pleasure. You're my last interview of the day and you've been the best one. Oh, wow. Yes. Listen, that, that makes me feel so good that we can end on, because I know you said you've been up since five o'clock this morning. So I going. know you're tired. Yeah, I've been going, but you just, man, I love when people are good at what they do and people don't realize how hard interviewing is. Like they think it's just asking questions. Like, no, it is listening. It is bringing back to where you have to go. I tell people that all the time. To me, it's like, it's a conversation. And I, I tell people, like, I actually research people and I look at what you guys do because I, like, nobody wants the same generic question. It's so boring. Like, I, I knew so you boring. Had, Yeah, I knew that you had probably done a thousand. I mean, I've seen some of the other interviews that you've done, yeah. but I know that today was probably a PR day for you. I was like, I don't want it yeah. to be boring. Like, oh. I don't. When I'm doing these, I don't want to be bored. So yeah. yeah. Yes. No, you are fantastic. And even, you know, just the way that you 
you take in the answer, you do such a good job of not jumping to the next. Cause you know, some people go, nice, thanks. Nice. So when you did the show and you're like, you didn't hear anything I said, you're just looking at number three. Like you are so present. You're so great at what you do. This is the best way to end my day. Seriously. So much. That really made my day. I yes. really appreciate You're great at what you do. You woke me up. I'm gonna call my team like the last one. I want to see that one ASAP. <laughs> Listen, I tell you, well, this won't be the last time I'll see you. I definitely yes. will your career and probably reaching out to you like let me do another interview Look, i you have my word if i have the time i am in, you are on my priority yes. of interviews because you you brought the energy and it's just it's so refreshing to see somebody like know what they're doing and to have that to feel that through the internet too that's special so yeah thank, thank you, you so, so much. much yes please have a great rest of your day thank you thank you so much you've been great okay i'll see you later bye, bye.